Hernando de Soto argues very much in his work, The Mystery of Capital, which is a brilliant, brilliant book, small book that he wrote about how um, growth, economic prosperity came to Europe versus some parts of the world, where he says that in mo many poor countries, their assets, but their assets essentially amount to dead capital. But anywhere in, say, Europe or North America, because of representational systems, for example, every piece of land in the US or in the UK, you know where it is, what it's worth, and you can you have a sea of oh, you can easily transfer it from one person to the other. Most young people who start businesses in those places will take a second mortgage on maybe some house or something their grandfather left them and get the money that enables them to then grow an enterprise and tomorrow they're multimillionaires. A typical African who has those same kinds of assets cannot translate those assets into capital. It's not fungible because we don't have institutions of representation that makes the trading that encourages the fungibility of the asset to materialize. However, the sort of argues that that's what matters, institution. Culture, uh, that's a soft issue. But let me speak to culture and why it matters. Um, I talked about this colloquium at Harvard some years ago, uh, at which um, the uh, question of how values shape human uh, progress was discussed. And there was one of the presentations in that, uh, um, uh, um, at that uh, colloquium, it was very telling. Was, uh, the chief executive at that time of the monitor company, speaking at the colloquium, was giving an example. They used to do value chain work and look at why some countries have problems along certain value chains. So they took Colombia. Colombia is a country that produces leather goods. And so leather goods from Colombia were in the US market, but they were not selling. The question was, why were people not buying leather goods? So they went and asked people in the streets, in the, in the markets, in the uh, um, malls, why don't you buy Colombian bags or shoes? They said, ah, they're terrible quality. So OK, next step back. Guys who manufacture these things in Colombia, what's the problem? Why is your quality terrible? They say, ah, you know, the kind of leather we get is terrible, bad state. So they go to the. Uh, tanneries. I said, why is the leather in such terrible shape? Ah, you know, our ranchers, they're so stupid, the kind of, you know, material that comes to us. So they went to the ranchers. Why do you send poor quality hides up to the, say, ah, you see, our cows are very stupid. <laughs> our cows go to the barbed wire and they're scratching their body against the fence. Conclusion, Colombia is poor because their cows are stupid. <laughs> Obviously, somebody has to understand that the cow needs to scratch his body if it has to flower some, some culture, values, what's important. Is that shower? Is that shower okay because water is coming out? Um, you know, I talk about the work ethic. You know, Mark 7:37. He's done all things well. Do we want to do things well? Is that part of our DNA? Is it ingrained in our culture that if things are not done right, we find something wrong with it? Why are we happy with Thailand that is going like it was River Niger? The work ethic. You know, and how does culture support this? A typical saying around, Ishekekiri Ola. You know, small work, big return. And the re ratio of return to work, when it's lost in a culture, you lose plenty. Um, delayed gratification. We have a generation that's wanting its four-wheel SUV, sorry, before it graduates. Delayed gratification is about learning to do things well, working at it, sewing, sewing, sewing. I mean, there are guilds in Europe that set those kinds of examples. And it used to be that the lawyers and some of professional groups in our country uh, set pretty good standards of this in those days. You're a young lawyer, you join a law firm, they pay you peanuts. Uh, it said that if you want, uh, uh, pin, uh, you know, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. But 
it was seen in their profession that those were years of learning. So you came, you went to the best law firm, paid you very badly, but you learned, you learned, you learned, and the day you broke out of that place, you were so good, you charged a premium. Delayed gratification is something that we've lost in our culture. Respect for the dignity of the human person. Work is collaborative effort to get optimum out of these skills, these talents, and these if you do not respect the dignity of the human person, if you do not respect people, what you get are people who are essentially there because they want to survive for now, but they are not committed, they're not passionate enough to give you the kind of synergy that will lead to quantum leaps, that lead to the kind of sustained progress that will lift our society up. Um, and so you get eye service in the workplace because the dignity of the person is not central to how you organize uh, uh, the, the, the workplace. Service as a way of life, giving service to people, sacrificial giving of yourselves to others. Um, I, I remember a story from a gentleman who was traveling in Liberia many years ago during the, um, the Civil War. And you know, the police people at the checkpoints uh, had them you know, like us would ask you for something. Um, and in the balance of their own pigeon, the way, you know, the, the big man, the ogre, is the boss man. And they kept saying to this Nigerian fellow, boss man, die small for me. Die small for me. Boss man, die small for me. That is, give me something. If you give somebody something, you are dying a little. And sacrificial giving of yourself is dying a little. And part of the challenge that we have developed here is that we have not developed an appropriate cultural disposition for dying a little for the next person. We've developed a culture focused on me, myself, and I. And that is part of the tragedy of the situation that we live in. important is the disposition to learning. Um, unless we have a learning culture, we're going to just keep repeating the mistakes of yesterday. And so we have to have people who draw from yesterday's experience and say never again. In the year um, 1993, when the elections uh, were cancelled, I was traveling in the United States at a conference and I was so distressed by what happened. I wrote an op-ed piece that was running in The Guardian uh, that, that week. And the title was, We Must Say Never Again. Unfortunately, we have repeated those same mistakes several times. Corruption is big on the agenda today. And part of the challenge is that people do not realize that a culture that has come to accept corruption is harming itself in some fundamental ways. I hear people talk about corruption and they bring it down to a moral issue. Good guys complain, or guys who are weak and can't get their own complain. I wish somebody would do a proper analysis of the real cost of corruption. The cost is so huge to our country. 